Well, last season got a little closer to comfort, didn't it? We only just survived. Some wonderful references that I must say in like the last episode culturally, and I hope I'm going to make many, many more as the series goes on. If you enjoyed them, let me know, because my work is always appreciated. On to season four, where I'm looking to solidify myself in the Premier League. Let's just not suffer second season syndrome, please. A big player has been sold. I bet you can't guess who. <laughs> Ah, it's wrong, but it feels so right. It's so good to be back. I'm even clean-shaven for this season. It's because I actually had a 70s murder mystery party at the weekend and I had to do sideburns and the tash. It was, it was quite the look. It was quite the look. I'm surprised they even managed to grow the facial hair, to be honest. What I want to say as well, and I don't have to do this, but it's a really, really big thank you for your support in this series. Season 3 has come around and I'm still getting as many views as I was for all the other episodes, apart from obviously the original ones, like the uh, 1 and 2 and 3. But... The rest of the, like, you know, it's consistent numbers. Everyone's saying that they're really enjoying the series. Thank you. And thank you for getting involved in the comments section. I love the community. I love the back and forth that we have. I've even been requested that I try and get more videos out. I'm going to try and do my best. We'll just see how we go. All right. <laughs> so, season four, we're still in the Premier League somehow, incredibly. It's going to be a very, very busy season, and there's been a lot of changes over the window. Let's walk you through them, shall we? Sadly, thanks to the wonders of the sorting. On FIFA. I am unable to show you just all the outs in one go, but I will try and rearrange it to do it now. So, sorry, you can see that I brought in two strikers below. We'll get on to them later. Sales. First, uh, you can tell that Kitalano has gone 2.25 million to Young Boys. Came in, did the job in the second half of last year. Just helped me get through the season, really, but sold him on. Not too disappointed with that. Similar story with Harley White. I brought him in on a free, sold him for 2.4 million to Basel. He was never going to get in the team. Dobbin's gone out alone, you can see that. I'm, I'm glancing over the other one, and you know why. Angus Gunn has gone. <laughs> I know, great, eh? Klein's gone as well, and again, this is why I kept bringing in free transfers, to kind of stay for a season, sell them on for some profit. He's a good example of that. 2.7 million I received from him. 4.5 for Angus Gunn, by the way. Nieto's gone for 4.75. I think there was a bit of potential there, but the players that I bought in are a di different level, different calibre, so... Not too disappointed to let him go. Nate Ferguson has gone for five million to Stad Rem. Stad Rem, I don't know how you say it. I think it's Rem, maybe. Joyce has gone, and this was an interesting one because he was touted to be like he was our original sort of superstar, but I just didn't really see a need to keep him in a place for him. So he's gone to Swansea for two point eight million. But the big news, everyone, and we all knew it. It couldn't last forever. Brenner has gone. His poor form towards the end of last season really sealed it for me. He might be a club legend, a channel legend, but £25 million from Fiorentina was just too much to turn down. Goodbye, Kenneth. I will miss you. Championship version of you, not last season's version of you. You were terrible. And that's it in terms of the outs. So now on to the ins. Mmm, yes. And on to the ins. I've still really hit into the free market. Uh, or the free transfer market to get some really good deals. And there's a player I need to show you. And we need to make an informed decision today. Okay. On whether I get him or not. But this guy here. Charles James. Is our brand new centre forward. And you can tell why I'm very very excited about him. 79 rated. 24 and a half million pound value. Got him on a free. Magic. Sprint speed. Very good. Finishing. 82. Very good. Good acceleration. Good strength. Good shot power. Good stamina. He's shown good potential. Well, great potential. He is going to be my main man up front, especially while Dorame is injured. He's still injured for three months, but we try not to talk about it. Then there's Lauren Rue or Louis Theroux. Uh, he might end up being Louis Theroux, to be fair. He's sort of like a year behind the development of James. I expect him to kind of be like 79 next year, if that makes any sense. Lauren Theroux or Louis Theroux. Will that one stick? I think it's going to stick. Great strength, 86. Good acceleration, good sprint speed. They're kind of similar, but I think James is just like a little bit more of a finished article. How was I ever going to replace Angus Gunn? Zach Steffen comes in. I'm going to look at getting a long-term goalkeeper when I find a really good young one that I think is going to do the business going forward. I've been looking at players like Albon Lafont and the obvious candidates, Unai Simon, people like that. But for free, I thought, get Zach Steffen in. 
10 million pound value that's probably only going to go up because goalies still tend to get better as they get older he's actually only, probably only just hitting his prime as a goalkeeper at the age of 30 I think it's a decent signing 79 it's a massive upgrade on what we had before with Angus that's for sure I can't tell if this is a regen or a new gen but Jackson Rowland looks I think he might be Milner's one I think CDM English 17 years old 12 and a half million pound rated already only on one grand a wage and he's gonna be, he's gonna be great. He's gonna be so, so good. I could say the same with Nadia Ali. I'm guessing this might be Riyad Mahrez. Is I don't know, but Nadia Ali looks very, very good. Right winger, 2.4 million. Probably another one that I'm just gonna kind of wait and see how he gets. So I might even send him out on loan. But good to bolster the squad. This is one of the reasons why I thought I can sell Brenner and sell Nieto. Tino Anjorin, Anjorin, I, 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 I said the same thing. 75 rated, 23 years old, English, 9.5 million pounds, rapid, great control, has that special something. He certainly does. I should know more about him, and I don't, but I got him on a free. I love, I love the free transfer market in this year's FIFA. It's just broken. I'm pretty sure. Victor Marino is Messi's regen. 75 rated, 17 years old, Cam, Argentinian, already £7 million, showing great potential. I think he's going to do more than that. But the dynamic potential, I think he's going to be better than that. He's going to be unreal. Him and Ajorin are probably going to mix up and they're both going to step into that sort of Cam role. I'm very excited. You say I say about this man as well, I'm in Sissoko, Marlian, uh, right back, I think that's Marley. it is, yeah. Right back, 18 years old, 78 rated, giving Wagnerman a bit of competition down that right-hand side. It also means that when Wagnerman does need rest, we're not going to weaken that side. He's absolutely rapid. Only problem is that he's 5 for 8. That's why Wagnerman is at the moment, because Wagnerman's probably a bit better defensively. But Sissoko is going to be incredible. Incredible. Same with Pedro Ribeiro. He's going to provide good competition for Jimenez on that left-hand side. 16 years old, Brazilian. Looking, looking great. It's worth noting that I have spent some money, okay? And this was a guy I wanted to get in January, but I just didn't quite have the funds to make it work. Junior Dina Ebembe is coming in into that midfield. He's everything I want in a midfielder. It says right mid. He's playing at centre mid because he can, and he's better suited to that position. He's big, he's quick, he's strong, and he's got a good technical ability. He's probably going to replace Anderson. Magic. Same with this boy, Antonio Silva. Rapid at the back, which is exactly what I need when I got three at the back. 92 sprint, spree, uh, sprint, spreed, sprint speed. Benfica let him go to me for 11 million quid. Bargain. He's 10 million pound value now. I think that's a bit ridiculous because that looks like he's gone down, but I'm not happy about that. But I think he's obviously stepped into that centre-back role and he's going to be a massive, massive bonus for us. Very exciting. And the last signing that I brought in is just to bolster that midfield again is Sotiris Alexandropoulos. Let's just call him Sooty or Sotiris. Sooty is better because he'll be sort of sweeping around behind the rest of the uh, comedy. Love it. Great stamina, decent player. That's all I need to know. It's every woman's dream. Not facially. Sorry, mate. No offence. So was it a good idea to sell Brenner or a bad idea? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. While you're there, why not drop a like on the video? Yes, I'm going in with the plug early today. Mm. Not like that. You, you filth, all of you, honestly. Grow up. Okay, so this is the big question I had for everyone, all right? And it is very simply this. There's a player in the free transfer market called Alexis Daniel. Now, if you can see Alexis Daniel... He's ridiculously good, okay? He's 92 rated, right? 92 rated, 18 years old, centre forward. He's available on a free. On a free. I could have gone and snapped him up, but I decided not to because I didn't think it would be realistic for the career mode because obviously he's a superstar who just so happens just to be out of contract for no reason whatsoever. Do I go and sign him? I personally would say no, because I want this career mode to be realistic. It has been. It's been a struggle. And let's be honest, if this were real life, he'd be snapped up by one of the big guns. It's like Kylian Mbappe being on a free transfer. Do you know what I mean? I, I just I don't understand how this has happened. As much as I'm enjoying kind of exploiting the free transfer market in FIFA this year, and I think there's elements of it that are really good, and then there are elements of it that are really bad. This is one of the really bad ones. In what world would this guy be on a free transfer 
with a month to go in the window and not be signed up by someone? In what world would that be likely? If he's still available on transfer deadline day, should we sign him? That That's the question. If he's still available on transfer deadline day, do we sign him? Let me know what you think. I, again, nonsense, isn't it? It's nonsense. So you can see now the squad looks really different compared to last year. We've got two brand new strikers, and Orgen's in there, uh, Sooty's in there, Junior Dimbe. So that entire front five has changed. Uh, the back five, which is weird because that was the weakest aspect of us last year, is still pretty much there intact. Uh, Jimenez, Jankovic, Silva, Tanganga and Wagner, there were Stefan and Goal. So only Silva and Stefan have come in, which means there are four real survivors from the first team last year. I believe when Durame comes in, he'll probably come back in for Louis Theroux up front. Chimiti probably will as well. And he is the only player that I've got that is still described as having the potential to be special. So I've really, really got to make sure that I keep him playing games because he's the only one that's got that real breakthrough potential. In terms of the rest of the team, though, I mean, I've also brought up some of the youngsters that we have. I mean, Kalic is still here, Garnacho's here, Njezovic's still here, uh, Arias, somehow he's still here. I've brought in a load of youngsters. Some of them are terrible, like Brahimi, I don't even ask. Payne's not very good. But you've got a couple of really decent players here. There's Badrami, he looks like he could be quite good. Ali obviously is good. Uh, Albi Barrett's terrible. But I bought in a guy called Sonogo from the Youth Academy. He looks very good. I'll keep you updated. Basically, we've had no one that's going to really kind of go through the ceiling from the Academy just yet. So that's why I've not really been that focused on it. When someone does, I will let you know. Okay. I look at that team and I think, where do I strengthen? Because I still have £25 million in the bank. So where do I strengthen? Even with Durame back, is that enough firepower up front? Is it enough blistering pace? I have pace, yes. Do I have blistering pace? No. Can I make the centre-backs any better? I'm back in that position last year where to really, really improve that team and take it maybe to the next level, I need to be into that sort of £30 million bracket. And there's one player in particular. Well, there's a couple, but one player in real, real particular I've been looking at is the main man that loads of people have probably signed this year, and that is Benjamin Sesco. I look at 32.5 million. They say I could probably get for 36.9. I'm just that. I'm just outside that bracket. Do you know what I mean? I'm just outside the bracket that I need to buy in players that are going to make a really, really big difference to the team. Our, Jacob Ramsey was another one. I really wanted to go for him. He's moved anyway, so forget what I said. Let me know what you think I really need to sort of strengthen uh, of us apart from everywhere, but realistically, where do I need to strengthen in this this squad to get myself up to that next level, to get up to mid-table Premier League status? Because that's ultimately where I want to be by the end of the season. If you think we're going to get European football because of this, uh, uh, uh. I mean, I've literally had twenty three million pounds into the budget. I've actually increased that by selling off players and bringing in better ones on the cheap. So I am. Fully, and we read that right now. I'm reading and dealing, and I'm making lots of jam roly polies, and Sandra's loving it, and it's great. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to play our first game of the season against uh, against Wolves. It's going to be it's going to be great fun. My son Jamie will be up there, and he'll be doing his uh, his terrible punditry. But uh, hopefully, we can make sure we get him a wee off. It'll be fucking <laughs> brilliant, wouldn't it? So that's enough of that. Right? How did he get such a good-looking son? It's it's beyond me. If I could look like any bloke in the world, I'd probably look a bit like Jamie Redknapp or Henry Cavill. I mean, Abby would probably go for either of them. It's an upgrade, isn't it? So, Wolves are up first, and they kind of only just survived with us last year. You know, they, they didn't exactly pull up any trees, and they've got a decent team. O'Reilly's a good player. What a player that I have looked at this season who's been good. Ike Norrie will get really good at this point as well. Jose Sars, obviously, like I said last season, one of the most underrated goalkeepers in the game. think he's excellent. And they've got Bellotti up front. That's very interesting. And Pedro Neto has also got bags of potential. Four to them. We're kicking off at Pride Park again. Last year we didn't. We got stuffed by Liverpool, I think, on the first day of the season. So hopefully that won't happen again. Well, obviously it won't. We'll get stuffed by Wolves instead. But if I could get off to a really good start in the league and get three points on the board early doors, that'd be great. My ambition for this season, probably the same again as last year, just survive. The lineup is basically what I went through earlier in the team management side of things. So... A couple of players make well, a few, a few players making the debut say I'm really enjoying Silver, I think, in that middle of the park. I might swap him and Jankovic because Silver's a bit quicker. This is a good start. James onto the ball. Tease it. Louis Theroux is off the mark. I don't know why I've given him the number nine. I'd rather it probably with James, but Louis Theroux 
has got his first goal for Derby, and it's literally only seven minutes into his career, and there was a good bit of movement between him and James, I have to say. I enjoyed that a lot. It's good by James. Lovely little fake shot. I don't know why he did it, actually, because then he put it back onto his left foot anyway. <laughs> and then he's played it through to Louis Theroux, and it's a, it's a lovely, lovely finish by the French striker. He makes great BBC documentaries as well. There you go, Laurent Roux, one goal in one match. Wolves completely caught out there. Love it, shifted it really, really well. What a good start that is. That's a lovely ball there. Sooty's onto it. Oh, that's not a good ball, really. The go that's what I mean by not having the blistering pace. No one really got away from any of their, their men there. That's offside, thank you. No one really got away from the men there. I was going to say, Wolves have thrown in some pretty hefty tackles in this opening few minutes, and they've got their first booking. I love the fact that it... Oh, bloody hell, they are absolutely... You bastard, he's injured Jankovic. Is Jankovic still down? If he, I'm going to be fuming if he is, because that was... Oh, unlucky Junior and Dim, Dim Bay. I need to come up with a, a different way of saying that. No. No. Good save there by Zach Stefan, making his first save for us there. Not very good play by us. Um, is anything going to happen for that Jankovic tackle? Were they injured him? No? I mean, he's carrying on Jankovic like a... Like the hero that he is, but I just the referee's got to get a bit of a handle on this here because they're just flying into tackles for no reason, like putting my players at risk, and I don't like it. They've hit the bar. What am I doing? Just clear it, mate. I mean, walls are all over me now, and it's because I'm inviting pressure by being an idiot. They've hit the bar there, and I've got a little bit lucky. Come on, City, make a good tackle. Or not, whatever. Zach Steffen again. I mean, it'd be great if you could just hold one, mate, because that would have no power in it whatsoever. But just got to see this out. I hate the fact they take short corners on this, and there's nothing you can do to win the ball back. That's offside. Is it offside? Yeah, it is. Jesus Christ, ref, come on. Great finish by Pedro Neto, but it was miles off. And yeah, struggling a little bit here. Wolves have really come back into it. I have to say, actually, they probably argue with it. If Jimenez is going to make it, I mean, he's made one pass really today, I think, and that was to help set up the first goal. Other than that, he's been absolutely terrible. But still feels like an absolute godsend at the back. It's a good tackle again there. I mean, we are literally up against it. Something. Cr Will you stop with this bloody short corner nonsense? Get a new fucking move, honestly. 1-1. One, one. It's the same move every time. And you can't do anything about it. It's so annoying. It's 1-1. One, one, same old sh That's really annoyed me. It's just the same effing tactic every time. They wouldn't realistically do that either. So piss off. I, I have not been able to make a pass since we scored that goal. I don't think I've made a pass out of my own half since we scored that goal. I've literally just... It's killing me at the moment. That's a good tackle there by Wagnerman. Oh, don't worry. It still falls to a Wolves player. Set up. I think Silver's just got nutmegs. I can't say they don't deserve it, but it's bullshit is what that is. Absolute flipping bullshit. Boo idea makes it 2-1. Piss off. Since we scored that goal. It's just like they just flipped the switch and they were like, oh, right, we're going up to ultimate difficulty now. And you can't get the ball. So we're 2-1 down. I think Jankovic getting injured has really, really harmed us there. I'm going to bring Dada. I'll move Silver out to there. But there, Dada. Anorji might as well not even be there, mate. He's been absolutely terrible. He's done nothing. Um, so he's he's off. And uh, Marino, Messi 2.0 is coming on. It's almost like Wolves have just got two. Oh, that's better. James. Oh, he can finish. He's left-footed as well. I love that. James is off and running. Good finish, mate. Lovely, lovely finish. Great strength as well. Makes a lovely run inside. Messi, he's onto it. Little Marino. Lovely ball. Bang. Finish. Quality, quality, quality. We've done really well there to get back into it. It's good to see that Jimenez is still just useless at defending. Nato, good save there by Zach Stefan. And he's brought me number two. Thank you. Oh, look, they're taking a short corner again. What a surprise. What a save by Zach Stefan. This short corner nonsense is really beginning to piss me off. Like, it's not even funny how annoying it is now. Louis Theroux on the counter. Off we go. I'd love to score a goal from their stupid ball. Theroux. He's into Marino. Oh, 
My God, what the absolute F was that? We don't talk about that. Tease it. Oh, there you go. He's made up for it. How in the world did he not score the first one? But Marino has scored on his debut. Three debut goals. Well, it's not hard, is it, to be fair, because I changed the entire team out. But I have to say, I think James is going to be a, a superstar here. He's got two assists in the goal to his name already. Great feed in. A lovely finish. That is. How did he muck up the one a minute ago when he just does that? Look how he's placed that in there. It's a marvellous finish. Takes Just uses the pace of the ball and just redirects it. Just guides it into the corner. Great finish. Well done, boys. 3-2. Much better. I think give James the ball. And we're gonna we're gonna do some wonderful things together. This is the first time I've really got into a sort of FIFA save where like it's the new gens that I'm really enjoying, and it's not having to sign sort of like real players. And it's always something I felt has been lacking in FIFA. But you get it in Football Manager like a lot. That's a great, great ball. What a goal! Oh, Marina should have got his head right. What a ball in there by Jimenez. Marina, the ball in. James. Oh, he's at the. I thought it was in. But he's at the top of the net. This kid's got everything. He's got absolutely everything. What a tackle there by Tanganga. Needed that. Lovely. Jimenez is away here. But his passing's been awful today. Can he put a decent ball in? Back post. Oh, Chimiti nearly there. You cheeky gits. 3 2. I'll take it. About, about a really poor 20 minutes defensively. Second half, we were really, really dominant. I really enjoyed that. James up front and Rue, both excellent. We're going we're gonna to have some fun with these guys. I can assure you of that. We've got the firepower. That's all I care about. And we, we carried a couple of players there. Jimenez was not very good like, at all. Involved, yes. Good, no. Oh, that's good news. Yankovic has suffered a broken toes after three months. Top. Top notch. So I wonder where we're going to go and buy some players. Probably in the defence, I would imagine. Where do I go and sign? I mean, I could obviously spend the money on going in and signing a player to cover for now the, the, the now injured Jankovic. Or do I ignore that? Say, well, we've still got Dardai, so we stick with it and go from there. Oh, oh. Oh, really? Inter have expressed an interest in signing Jeff at Tanganga for thirty-four point eight million. I can't, I can't help myself. I want to say no, but I can't help myself. The wheeling and dealing side of me is sat there going, "No, I can get, I can do this. I'll part with him for forty-eight million. They'll say no to this." Oh, they've bid forty-eight million for him. Oh, crap. <laughs> crap. Well, um, that that was unexpected. Oh, dear. Oh, no, I didn't mean for that to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> 48 million quid for Jeff at Tanganga. I mean, realistically, that that's a great deal. But bugger me. Lots to work on. I've gone off and I've scouted a couple. Um, I saw them mentioned in the comment section. Uh, Bella Kotchup and Soleil. I am now scouting them to see how we do. I think if we can get Tanganga, we need to replace him with another sort of like low 80s player because he's 83 rated. I think 48 million is a genius deal. We bought him in for about 15 million, so we've made a massive profit on him. And this should hopefully allow me to sign two really, really good players. That's my plan. So next time out, what we'll probably do is we'll have, actually, we'll play all three games. We'll have the away game against Norwich, the away game against Villa in the Carabao Cup, and then the home game against Chelsea. And then obviously that will take us towards deadline day, so we'll probably have that fitted in as well. It depends on how many chances I get for it. If there's a lot of chances, we might save the Chelsea game, but we will see how we get on. Ultimately, though, what do you make of the window? Good changes? I think there's some really good players that we've signed in there. James looks like he's going to be an absolutely brilliant signing for us. When Durame comes back, we should have a lot more kind of options in the way of up front. I think the midfield has a decent-ish balance to it. It's going to take me a little while to get used to it. I think Roland impressed me when he came on. Um... Yeah, I think it was decent, very decent. And the back's still shaky, but I think with Jimenez in there, you, you just have to accept that you're going to concede goals. We'll just see. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and welcome to Season 4. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then do drop a like on today's episode. Share, subscribe, and until I see you again, 
Take care of yourselves, everybody, and stay cool. Oh dear, what have I done? Oh dear.